Welcome to today's video, where we dive deep into SSRF vulnerabilities, what they are, the various types of SSRF, and how to test and mitigate the SSRF vulnerability. We will cover what is server side request forgery, how to test for server side request forgery, SSRF canaries, and exploitation of SSRF, how to create impact on SSRF and exploit the SSRF vulnerability, impact less or unexploitable SSRF, good resources for exploitation of SSRF, solutions to fix SSRF vulnerabilities, and good resources to study more techniques of SSRF exploitation. I'm Nirad Mishra and let's get started. So, a server-side request forgery or an SSRF is a critical security vulnerability that allows attacker to manipulate a server into making requests to the internal resources. This can lead to data leaks, unauthorized access, and oftentimes it leads to complete system compromise. In this video, we'll explore different types of SSRF attacks and demonstrate various testing techniques. For better explanation, I've created this slide for you guys. So, Let's assume this is our machine and we are sending a GET request to a public facing website. So a public facing website is connected to the internet and it's also a part of the internal network. That is the internal network infrastructure of that website. In this internal network, there, are, there can be tons of devices like IoT devices, imaginary internal devices like unauthenticated dashboards on some IP address like because the internal network is usually a lot more vulnerable right because it is assumed that nobody can access it no outsider can come into the internal network or make some requests or communicate with the internal network so oftentimes we see that internal network is not that secure as compared to the external network that is like public facing websites and stuff like that here in this slide as you can see when we try to connect with the internal network we are stopped because internal network is not connected to the internet but the public facing website is so a public facing website or a public facing device is part of the internal network and it's also the part of the internet right so we cannot directly make request to any internal device but we can hit the website right so we can make a working connection and communicate easily with the website now what happens is if a website is vulnerable with ssrf that is server side request forgery because the attacker is able to make the request to the website and communicate very easily attacker will often send a payload to exploit the ssrf and trick the website into making the request towards the internal network or the internal devices. As you can see in the slide, first the attacker makes a request to the website and in the payload there can be anything like slash get URL equals to some different IP and then the website makes that internal request to the internal resources and then website gets the response and then website sends the response to the attack. So, here we are able to access internal resources through the website because the website is part of the internal network as well as connected with the internet. So this is what the definition of server side request forgery is. In this vulnerability, an attacker tricks the website or the web server or any device in making a request to the internal network or some other network and accesses the internal resources. So without wasting any more time, let's jump into the practical demonstration on how we can test for SSRF vulnerabilities and how we can exploit. Okay guys, um, so for demonstration of SSRF, uh, I'm gonna use ChatGPT and I'm gonna be forcing ChatGPT to write a vulnerable code that will be vulnerable through server-side request forgery. And yeah, uh, initially I was thinking of doing some labs, but I thought let's study the code even like so to understand how it works. So we'll just try to make chat GPT write a vulnerable code for us, right? Right, PHP code to link. Initially I'm gonna see if it by default write a vulnerable code. So let's see that. 
um, so yeah now it's just loading it but uh, we also want it to contain HTML write a PHP code to make an HTML form uh, take input as URL and load an image from URL yeah let's see if by default ChatGPT writes a vulnerable code that will be vulnerable to SSRF right and uh, if request method equals to post this is the and yeah of course this will be vulnerable to SSRF as you can see ChatGPT has provided us the output and I didn't even mention that it needs to write a vulnerable code but in fact it data wrote a code that is vulnerable so yeah that's that's very interesting ChatGPT giving vulnerable code output that's fun at least that's fun for hackers right um, so I'm just gonna go to this and paste the code here and then I'm gonna run this command to start up a PHP server hopefully I have started a PHP server on 127 uh, I'll just change the code so that will be 1234 navigate to localhost uh, column 1234 I have a PHP server running and this is the load image form right so now we are gonna exploit this particular page and we'll see how we can exploit the vulnerability right one thing to see here is there is no check that is being performed um, so it's just taking the post data the, uh, with the perimeter image URL and it's just it's just loading that particular data um, file underscore get underscore contents right so so now we have studied and understood what SSRF is we have also created a vulnerable code through ChatGPT and ChatGPT by default gave us the output of the code that was vulnerable to SSRF now what's left is for us to test and exploit this SSRF right so as you can see we have this HTML form so first thing what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna open it up inside the burp shoot browser so yeah let's see so as you can see I'm able to open it through burp shoot browser um, first I'll ensure that the request is going through so we can enter anything inside this uh, URL you can often see this kind of functionality inside a website that allows you to upload images or load images to a URL right so let's see if we are getting a request here so I tried loading this particular thing that is the Burkshoot collaborator and I got a DNS fallback and I also got the HTTP request as well right so as you can see I'm getting this get request uh, and we are sending this response and uh, inside the target we are getting this kind of image now if we see our burp shoot proxy history we are sending this particular post request and we are getting this kind of response right because it's loading an image inside like b64 right so we can copy this and if we use decoder to decode this particular string then we are getting the burp shoot collaborator response so what it's doing is it's sending a get request and it's b64 encoding that the response that it gets so it's base64 encoding the response that it gets now we have verified that we have an SSRF we are able to make the request and we are also able to get the response of that particular server request that it makes next thing to do will be make an internal request uh, so usually what I do when I test for SSRF is I try localhost accessing the localhost or any other internal IP right what I generally do is like I just try to load the localhost and let's see what happens if we enter localhost here right so as you can see the request is not getting through that's because nothing is running on port 1234 other than our target itself right so let's stop this 
and if we send the request to intruder now we are gonna fuzz for the ports right so here we are trying to analyze if any other internal service is running on the local host on the internal ip of the website as you guys know every device have two types of ip one is the external ip that is used to connect with the internet and the internal ip that is used to connect with the internal network so i'll just add an injection point here and uh, i might get the numbering wrong here but as far as i know there are one two six five five three five tcp ports right so we are gonna fuzz from one port number one to six five five three five and step will be one here and we are fuzzing the local host for the open ports to identify if there is any internal service running let's see what happens if we click on start attack as you can see it's making it's making this request and we are getting these errors right so on port 1 we get this error fail to open stream connection refused because nothing is running on that particular port right and all of the requests that are going through uh, i'm not getting anything that's particularly interesting because the server is making a request and it's not getting any kind of response because no service is running on all of these other ports, right? This is the usual thing that I do while testing for SSRF. So right now we are just doing the internal port scanning through the SSRF. So after this, let's just assume if we have an internal service I run it through Python. So if I run this particular server through Python, it will run on my local IP, right? It will run on the local host. And it's running on 8000. I'll just restart our PSP file that was vulnerable with SSR by using the command PSP hyphen S local host uh, 1234 and test.psp. Along with this, I have uh, run this particular internal network. So as you can see, we are running our vulnerable server on localhost 1234. Uh, and we have also run a Python server that demonstrates an internal service that is running on port 8000. We have already verified that we are able to get a particular SSR ref here through the server. It's making the request this particular payload run ssrf.php that was outputted by chat gpd by using the command php hyphen capital s localhost 1234 ssrf.php right and i have already run an internal service that is a python http server on port 8000 we have already confirmed that we have an ssrf on the image url parameter now what I'll do here is I'll use the repeater tab or maybe I'll just use the website and uh, so as you can see we are running the target right now and what I'll do is I'll try to fetch the python server that I'm running on the local host at port 8000 right so here I tried to load this particular Python server through the SSR and I was able to send a GET request here as we can see. Now inside the response we are getting this particular base64 data and we'll just decode it using the decoder. And as you can see we are able to see the response that it got from this particular GET request that is sent on. If we are targeting the SSRF that is on our uh, PHP server making an internal request on the Python server getting the response in base64 decoding the base64 and getting this particular response here so as you can see we were able to make the HTTP request to our Python server that was running internally 
and a PHP server was running externally. And the attacker is able to use this particular PHP SSRF vulnerability, make a request to the internal IP and send a, get a response from this internal service that is running. This is all possible because our code is vulnerable through SSRF. If we look at our code, that is ssrf.php, you will notice that there is no check performed when we are sending. We are just receiving image URL in post parameter and we are just sending that input, whatever input we got inside the function that is file get contains. In this PHP function, file get contains make the request of image URL. So basically to fix this is we can add a check here. Ideally, we want to only use add, add a check. So to fix this SSRF vulnerability, the developer can add a check here. Make sure, make sure that the image URL that is being received in the post parameter is present in the whitelist and only allow the user to load the image from those particular URLs that are whitelisted. So whitelisting is always a better approach than blacklisting because in blacklisting, we are making sure that the user doesn't target particular IPs or URLs. But in whitelisting, we are only allowing users to make requests with certain URLs only. Once the developer adds a check here, they can ensure that the file get contains only receives this particular user input once the whitelisting is properly done. As we say, in secure development, you should never trust user input. So yeah, just by adding a validation here, we can mitigate this SSRF vulnerability. So this was a very basic type of SSRF that we viewed. There are different types of SSRF that can be present in the web application. For example, blind SSRF. The SSRF in which you don't get a response from the website directly is known as blind SSRF. To exploit these blind SSRF, what you can do is you can usually run intruder and do local port scanning to ensure that you are hitting some internal services. So what happens usually is if you use intruder and if you set the payload from 1265535 and the IP to localhost or any other localhost IP, you'll be able to port scan by various differential factors. For example, let's say if a port is closed or if a port is open, these requests will have different time, different response time or might even have different error or status codes. And that's how you can use blind SSRF to do internal port scanning and hit internal different kind of services. One other thing you can do to exploit blind SSRF is use SSRF canaries. So this is a tweet by Franz Rosen. And he calls them SSRF canaries. Uh, so what SSRF canaries are is basically when you chain a blind SSRF to another SSRF that is present internally, right? And so what you basically do is you use the SSRF to first the internal network services, find another SSRF there to make the request on our collaborator server or our, on our callback server. So right now I'm using Burp Collaborator, but you can also use interact.sh and there are various services that you can use to ensure that you receive a callback from SSRF. So guys, so far we have learned what server-side request forgery is, how we can test for basic server-side request forgery vulnerability, how we can prevent SSRF attacks and what a vulnerable SSRF code looks like. In the next video, 